Hey guys, welcome back to Aired Down. And this is the Alpine Lizard, my 77 Jeep CJ5. Well, spring has finally sprung here in Nevada, and it's time to clean that ugly, gross Jeep up. You know, maybe it's time to do a low key walk around, so let's get it all cleaned up, let's get it pretty, and uh, then you can finally see the nuts and bolts of this thing. Alright folks, it's time we talked about the Alpine Lizard. Now this is a 1977 Jeep CJ5. Now I bought this Jeep in May 2012 and it's currently almost May 2020, so I've had it 8 years. But when I bought this Jeep it was pretty much stock everything. It had an AMC 304 V8, a full roll cage that somebody must have welded in a Ford T18 transmission, and what the previous owner thought was a Scout 2 Dana 300. It turns out that that was just a Scout 2 Dana 20. Now, over the years, this Jeep has gone from 31s to 33s and tube fenders, then to new axles, a wheelbase stretch and 35s, and now finally to 37s. Alright, so let's get down into what equipment this thing actually has and what this Jeep is actually made of. Let's start with the basics. Let's start with the front. Now the front has a Wagoneer Dana 44. It's the older one that's passenger drop. Now that came with flat top knuckles and it also came with drive flanges. Right now I just have stock shafts in it, but it has a TJ Rubicon air locker in it and worn premium hubs. Now I get the most questions about my steering and my front suspension on this Jeep. And so I cover that in a lot finer detail later in this video. Feeding that front axle is a Tom Wood single carbon 1310 super slip drive shaft. I mean this drive shaft has like 25 inches of travel because of my funky homebrew front suspension. Now powering the back wheels is a 93 to 95 Rodeo Dana 44. I like the Rodeo because it has disc brakes right from the factory. The back is still on stock axle shafts and also has a TJ Rubicon rear locker. This is that rear locker that's also a limited slip when it's not in use. Feeding power to the back axle is a Tom Woods double carton 1310 drive shaft and man this thing is short, but I have seen shorter. These axles are responsible for turning a 37 inch Pitbull rocker radial. Now, this is on a 17 inch wheel, and right now I just have steelies. As you can imagine, this tire and wheel package is really heavy. The tires themselves are pretty much 100 pounds, and the wheels I think are 30 a piece. 
So the fact that I'm still on stock shafts and I've been through the Rubicon and some other harder trails, I mean, that might give you some insight onto how lightweight my Jeep is and how easy I am on the skinny pedal. The front axle is 61.5 inches WMS and the rear axle is 58 inches WMS. But I use a one and a half inch wheel spacer on the back to give my shocks just a little bit of clearance since they're outboarded. Putting power to the drive shafts is, and get this, a 2002 Cadillac Escalade 6 liter LS motor. And I cover that in a little more detail later. Right behind that motor is a Ford T18 transmission. So talk about marrying old, clunky technology with new, awesome technology. This isn't the transmission I want in this rig, but it's a transmission that works really good in this rig, so I'm gonna keep it for a little while until I can afford to upgrade. Behind that Ford T18 is an equally old Jeep Dana 20 transfer case. Now this transfer case has been outfitted with the Terralo 3.15 kit. This transfer case has been twin-sticked as well, so it's a pretty cool little rock crawler transfer case. Now with this motor, I did use HP tuners and I tuned the whole thing myself. Now let's talk about suspension. On all four corners, I have Wagoneer lift springs from Rancho. They're the famous Rancho 44044s. Those springs have an offset pin, which helps me with my stretch. And speaking of stretch, I'm stretched four inches in the front and three inches in the back. To accomplish that stretch in the front, I use those Wagoneer springs, plus spring hangers on my front bumper, plus custom shackle mounts on my frame. And to top it all off, I've got a custom modified more power steering box mount that's stretched an additional two inches forward for a total of three and a quarter inches. In the back, I just use the stock spring hangers and shackle hangers, and actually I have five inch boom shackles all the way around. On all four corners, I have Bilstein 5100 shocks. In the front, they're mounted with four shock towers. In the back, they're mounted on some custom shock hoops. As anyone with a CJ knows, stretching the rear axle is a huge pain. To help with this, I made a custom fuel tank and fuel tank skid. Now part of my occupation is an engineer, so I had access to CAD and some sheet metal programs. So I did design and manufacture my own fuel cell. It has a pocket like the Genrite cells that allows the pumpkin to go further back without hitting anything. Because I had full control over the design, I tried to keep the same fuel capacity and the same mounting bolt holes, as well as the same fill and vent tubes and same connections to the sending unit. In case you were wondering, the fuel capacity wound up being 16 gallons. Now let's talk interior just a little bit. I pretty much have all the original dashboard stuff set up the same. I do have Corbo Baja RS seats in the front with the cloth topper, which has kind of turned gray over the years, but it's really comfortable. I also have the Corbo retractable four-point harnesses. I have the tilt wheel, but I use a smaller steering wheel as well, and it helps make that little cabin just a bit more roomy. Speaking of making the cabin more roomy, I've also done the wheel well cutouts, and that helps me move my seats back another three inches, which is money. Now the only other real significant interior stuff is I've got a fire extinguisher that I keep right behind the driver's seat. I've got roll bar mounted kicker speakers and custom PVC boxes, and a waterproof Kenwood radio. You may have noticed that ratchet strap webbing on my roll bar. Now what that is, is a rooftop bag mount. I can put all my lightweight trail camping stuff in there and save a little room. As you can imagine, there's not a lot of storage room in this Jeep. Another significant thing to talk about on this Jeep is the body armor. You've noticed my front bumper with the stinger, but I also have these completely custom garage made tube fenders with wheel well liners, rock sliders that integrate with my tube fenders, rear corner armor that integrates with my rock sliders, and finally a custom rear bumper with swing out and a chromoly spindle. I also have a cooler rack that integrates with this bumper, but I didn't put it on for this video. And all of this stuff helps me bounce off rocks and slide down grades with no issues. 
Now let's take a guided tour of some of the finer points on this Jeep. This is the LQ9 LS Swap. Now this is an LQ9 out of a Cadillac Escalade, but it is the same basic motor as, actually I think it's the exact same motor as the LQ9 out of the Vortec Max. So I got a Vortec Max cover and it's not even a lie. This is a York Air Up pump. Now this is like the big one, the 210, and I got this custom cool bracket from a guy called, uh, his last name is Sharky anyway, I don't want to say his first name, but he makes these really cool manifolds for the York pumps, and it's just a belt driven air up pump, and I've got a goat belt bracket, maybe you can see that in there, nice CAD plated bracket to go with it, that mounts it clean to the LS. Right here, Duracell AGM battery, deep cycle, all that jazz, good stuff. Now this is a truck motor, and it's worth noting you can only run this with the truck motor. So, truck motor, truck manifold. I've got a ProDry S filter, I believe it's, uh, I don't even remember the brand. Ah, sorry guys, let's see. That's an AFE ProDry S on a a custom set of adapters and all the hoses and dingle bobs to make it uh, go right into the intake. And I am running the MAF, and I do run a full MAF and MAP, or a MAF and speed density tune com combination. I don't uh, get rid of one or the other. Here is my, and if you follow us at all on Instagram or, or any of that, you'll have seen this before. This is my Jack Daniels bottle holder. Uh, basically it turns a Jack Daniels bottle, a fifth of Jack Daniels, into a coolant catch. And it's got a seven inch radiator mounting pattern so it'll bolt right into a CJ radiator or consequently like a C10 or a K10 radiator with a seven inch mount. I have an electric fan. Get you back under here. This is an electric fan from a Ford um, not a Taurus, but an Escort. So it's an Escort fan, not a Taurus fan. Still two speed, slightly lower CFM, but way shorter. Perfect for a CJ, and it actually fit the radiator very well. Coming back up here, I've got Corvette Z06 exhaust manifolds on this. Those are gonna be really hard to see because it's so freaking bright out here. That's a better view. Corvette Z06 exhaust manifolds. And really the main reason was clearance to the frame. And you can see how close it is to the frame. Uh, getting clearance for the frame on these is tough. And I've got all AN lines up to the motor, right from the tank. I've got a nice fuel gauge just to, for uh, diagnostics purposes. And then I use this area here as a bulkhead for all of my locker stuff. This is the intake. These are the two uh, different locker lines. And I'm actually just running manual air switches from the dash. This is a YJ brake booster and uh, master cylinder setup. It's a little outdated for this rig. The pedal's a little squishy, but it does work. Here I have a 200 amp, um, you could just hit this and disconnect the whole circuit, a 200 amp circuit breaker, and it runs basically the entire inside of the Jeep and all of the LS computer stuff. And the reason why I did it this way is because this line goes underneath the motor to the starter and right up to the battery. So besides the starter and the line of wire that goes to here, everything else is fused through this link. And then I've got a bus bar here. And then if I can get this open, I'll show you my custom uh, Here, let's use the actual Jeep key to open it. I have a custom fuse panel made from scratch. And then, uh, this will yellowed now, but I have a custom little diagram I printed out, and this is all watertight and stuff. And uh, it's worth noting, a lot of people combine a bunch of lines when they do the LS swap. I separated everything, made sure everything was the right current for the wire, and then I went through and I did all of the wiring myself. The computer, or this is the tack box here. Computer's hiding down here, you can kind of see it. And then all of the harnessing, I trimmed out myself. 
and then ran. And then I covered it with this really nice wrap. And that, uh, that tape that's not sticky, but it sticks to itself, basically it's flex seal. But anyway, there's a really good view of the LS motor. Now, coming under here, here's a skid plate. You guys saw me build that skid plate. But here's the LS motor hiding up in here. And that LS motor is connected to a Ford T18, T, uh, a Ford T18 transmission with a classic Chevy bell housing and some Novak conversion stuff. It's all custom motor mount stuff. Custom from the ground up. Made by yours truly. And at one point I had designed all of this motor mount stuff that it, so I could sell it. But um, it's too expensive to make something so complicated and sell when you have no budget. But what you'll see is I've got the engine mounts there and I've got an engine girdle. And the girdle was important because you see a lot of CJs with frame flex. Plus even better than that, it gave me a spot to put a skid plate, which you guys also saw me do. And then it's a custom two and a half inch into single three inch out exhaust that's all wrapped up. Um, from the exhaust manifolds to the Y where it meets. You'll see down here a custom belly pan that I used to hold the transmission up and everything. And it's, uh, it's contoured to meet the transmission and the transfer case. And I only really contoured the spots I needed and then smoothed everything out. And it's all made out of quarter inch plate and I'll just, I didn't even bend it, I just made the pieces and then welded them together at the angles I wanted. Um, so that was quite the chore, but it's a really nice belly pan, custom belly pan. This is my steering setup. Now I get most, most of the questions I get from everybody is how did you do your steering? And that is a good question. This is a Jeep box. This is a Astrovan pitman arm and it's from the Astrovan with a pitman arm that sticks straight down and wipes like that. And then um, an, an unnecessarily strong 7 8 Heim with a, uh, I think it's a one and a half inch by quarter wall dom. And then uh, over here we have it meet I guess uh, I should mention too, I did run this on top, the Heim on top of the steering arm, or the pitman arm. And then, I meet here at Wagoneer Knuckles, Wagoneer Flat Top Knuckles, with a parts mic one inch spacer, ARP extended length studs, and the Sky high steer arm. And then the high steer arms are all drilled out for Heims as well as the pitman arm. And then I ran the drag link and tie rod underneath the high steer arm. And I only had to cut out the frame in this one little spot. And even then, you can see I rub it now and then, but it's not a big deal. And then I just fish plated it on the outside. Just for your edification, here's the other side. And uh, I did have to send the passenger knuckle in to get modified and then this knuckle, the driver knuckle, was actually from a Chevy pickup. So I've got one Wagoneer knuckle, this machine, and then one Chevy pickup knuckle. And it did make the backing plates fit funny, so I had to weld a little fastener, I don't know if you can see that, a little fastener onto the knuckle to uh, hold the Wagoneer um, backing plate. and then. To top it all off, I had a section made that has a flat spot here, and this is a lot like, uh, oh, I'm not going to remember their name, there's a manufacturer in Canada that makes something like this, but it's something similar to theirs, and then I just have a bolt go through it with a hole drilled in it, and then this is just a steering stabilizer is all it is, and then the steering stabilizer meets at a stud that I welded onto the axle. Now for bump stops, you probably already saw it, but I just welded some box tubing that I cut out special to the frame. 
and then I use the Chevy U-bolt flip stuff from a Chevy axle with a little sleeve. You can see the sleeve on the side right here. This is a sleeve to make it work because this axle is a little bit smaller in diameter. And then the bump stop just contacts a pad that I welded across the the uh, the U-bolt retainer, or I guess the U-bolt plate. Then, these are Ford um, shock towers. I didn't modify them at all. I just cut a hole or drilled some holes in my frame and sleeved them. And then the shock tower bolts right up. And then I just have some um, some quarter inch box tubing that I kind of cut up into a bracket. And then that bracket just mounts the shock outboard of the, of the axle just a little bit or away from the center line of the axle a little bit. Here's another view at all this junk, if you're curious. Now this is some custom stuff here. I actually had these, I designed these pieces with the adjustability in mind, and then welded them on, had them made and welded them, welded them onto my frame. And they clear the original fuel lines, you can kind of see right there. And then this is how I do my shackle reversal and my full width spring kit in the front. And then in the front, we meet up with just some bumper mounts that I made up. And uh, while we're down here too, I guess I should mention, this whole front bumper is 100% completely custom fab made in the garage. I designed these gussets and had them printed out for me or plasma cut for me. But, and I used, uh, so there's a reason for these gigantic bolts and that's because these holes already existed in the frame. So that's what got used. And the bumper has a quarter inch plate on top that mounts the winch, the original 8270. Um, it's not the 8274 because that one has a free spool on the side. This I believe is an 8270. And then uh, I've got shackle mounts hidden in here. Um, like I said, the full width kit. This is the stock winch plate, but I had to modify it to fit my bumper. And then the roller fair lead, all that jazz. And then a custom cover that I actually designed for this winch. And uh, you'll notice my, my name is aired down on YouTube, but this is aired down syndicate. And there's a whole storyline behind that that we'll get to later. But hopefully one day my channel will turn into Air Down Syndicate when a bunch of my friends start to uh, contribute to the channel. And then one last thing I thought I should show you. An integrated power steering box kit, uh, skid that bolts right to the bumper and protects that vulnerable power steering because otherwise it would just be right here totally exposed. And as you can see, that's an important thing to do. It gets used. 